the prerequisites for education have been defined as light, liberty and learning, in modern terms the ideals of university life. But have these ideals been realised? Have the essential values of higher education in its real sense been lost? Students at UCC have decided, yes, the ideals have been defeated by the system, and the Philosophical Society overwhelmingly decided they were not getting a university education in Cork. They say on their campus of National University there is learning without light or liberty. There's the joke told that in most other universities when the professor comes in and says good morning, the students say good morning. But in Cork when the professor comes in and says good morning, they write it down. We're in prison in the system in this place. This is what we all feel. When we come in the first day, nobody ever tells us what we should do. Nobody tells us that there are certain faculties that we haven't touched on at school, things like archaeology or psychology or things that we might have had an aptitude for if we tried, but we, we don't know they're there. Therefore, we go on with what we did at school. We do French, we do English, we do Irish, because it's all we know. And this is we're, we just joined the thousands of others who come out with our BAs at the end of three years with this degree that everybody has, which doesn't mean anything. This, the professors themselves don't uh, show enough respect for the students. They turn up late for lectures. Sometimes they cancel lectures without giving enough notice to students. University College Cork is built on what is believed to be the site of the school founded by St Finbar in the 7th century. And its motto is, where Finbar taught, let Munster learn. Founded as Queen's College for just over 100 students in 1849 and rechartered as a constituent college of the National University in 1908, its student roll has multiplied by 25 since. It has a full-time day student roll of 2,559 this year, virtually double the numbers of 1958 and reflecting an annual increase in numbers of 9%. Arts, the biggest faculty, has 1,086 students and there are 76 students from outside Ireland, the most the college can take from an annual foreign application of more than 800. Since 1930, UCC has added a Dairy Science Institute, built an electrical engineering block on part of the site of the old Cork Jail and provided additional facilities for arts and civil engineering. But the growth in student numbers has far outstripped facilities available to them and there is no doubt the university is grossly overcrowded. Despite this, there have been some outstanding academic achievements. The authorities, conscious of this overcrowding, have drawn up an overall plan to alleviate pressure and provide space for all departments in a planned new £1,350,000 science building. So far, however, work has not started on the building because the government hasn't released the money. Until it does and the plans become fact, UCC will remain what it is today. Its undergraduates, to an extent, frustrated, cynical and complaining. There was a time when one was set to read a course in university. Now, unfortunately, one spent most of one time writing a course in university. In psychology, we have 120 students in the first year class and uh, the room holds a maximum of 50. Well, the students line up about an hour beforehand and some of them, even at that, can't get into the lecture theatre so they're outside the door trying to listen to what's going on, they can't hear. And we've even had instances of people fainting because of the overcrowding, gets overheated. Are you satisfied, Doctor, in 1966 that the university system here is adequate? As far as the universities can themselves, well, as far as they're responsible for their own fate, they've done what they can. For example, we have set up in recent years, the new uh, electrical engineering building, that's a new development on the, on the other hand, which doesn't provide any extra space for the older subjects. I think it is a defect in this college at any rate, and especially in 1966, in this age when every school child knows about voyages to the moon and so on. Uh, it's an atmosphere, it's an age which was seen beforehand by such authors as Jules Verne in his books in the old days. But I would say that uh, we haven't done anything since we haven't added to the facilities provided for the basic subjects of physics and chemistry. Uh, we haven't done anything to provide for that change in attitude which I think must come into higher education of having uh, greater emphasis on all aspects of science, all fundamental aspects of science. In Ireland, the university system begins properly in the secondary school. Um, 
the pupil accepts, completely accepts, without question, all the facts that are given and must repeat these facts in examinations. Now, this is the mortal sin of our education. Um, if, uh, a similar pupil in, in France will be taught not facts, but how to think. And um, when we come to university at 17, which is a very young age in any case, we are used to this system whereby we don't think and we do not have any stimulation to think from our professors or our lecturers and this is the main crisis in the universities of Ireland today. Uh, our professors do not seem interested. They, they give us these notes and they're, they're just another continuation of facts.